So I hope you all had uh, a wonderful night. I can tell you the Heartland schedule is very tight. You know, last night, as I was trying to do my final touches, I came here, tried to do a rehearsal, and after that, going back to the dorm and reaching there, it's time to sleep. And then it was at 2.15, I wake up, and I'm like, <laughs> I thought it was already 6, but I, <laughs> I had to stay awake until now. But amid all that, we thank the Lord uh, for all that he's doing and helping us achieve as students here. Now, yesterday, my dear brother Junior started with a question and asked, why are you here? And I hope you are able to get uh, an answer through after, his, after he shared the message. But now today, I'm also asking you a question. Why me? You know, Psalm 31, we're going to be sharing from Psalm 31. Psalm 31 is a psalm of David's personal lament to the Lord. And we can call it a psalm, a lament psalm. Now, this psalm, when we break it down, we can be able to break it down um, in five ways how David is crying to the Lord. In the, first, uh, in, in the first verse, from verse 1 to 4, we're seeing here there is an invocation of God's name. And then after that, from verse 5 to to eight, we see David is giving a plea to God for help. And after that, from verse 9 to 13, David is listing or giving the complaints that motivated him to lament to God. And from verse 14 to 20, David is giving an expression of trust in God. And from verse 21 to 24, David is expressing his praise to God. Now, this psalm can be linked with the trials of David when he was being persecuted by King Saul. Now, David, at that point in time, he had been, God had already anointed him to be the next king of Israel. But as his fame was growing up, the king was not happy, and he had to persecute him. We can find this story in 1 Samuel from chapter 19 to 24. And now, this psalm is a challenge to us to us who are in this present day, to guide us and help us keep focused on Jesus as we lament to him the challenges that we are going through in our day-to-day -day life. Now, when we are in big trouble, when trials are all around us, one of the questions that we tend to ask ourselves is, why me? How could you answer that question? Now, if not you, then who? If not you, then who? Because we tend to ask, why me? If probably you have lost someone, if probably you're sick from cancer, if you're going probably through a terrible divorce and you ask, why me? Would you wish another person to go through the same experience you're going through? Probably no. So then if not you, then who? Then the, the thing that we have to know is that this psalm shows us that why me? Yes, it is you because there's a reason why you need to go through the challenges or the trials that you're going through. Now, when things don't seem to be going right, what do we do? Where do we put our hope? Now, before David became the king of Israel, before he was put on the throne, he had to go through trials. He had to be tested because he was going to lead the people of God. He needed to have trust in God, trust that's not going to be anchored on opinions of men, Trust that's not going to be anchored on the armed forces that he had. He needed to have trust that was based on his relationship with God. And that was why it is very important that he had to go through the trials that he went through. Now, James chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, and verse 12, explains to us something about trials. It says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh what? Patience, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting what? Nothing. And he continues on to say, Blessed is the man that endureth what? Temptation. Why? For when he is tried, he shall do what? He shall receive the crown of life, which who? Which the Lord hath promised to them that do what? That love him. Now, trials are important for us in our day-to-day -day life, for they help our faith to work patience. And this helps us endure the temptations that we face each single day of our life. And if we endure these temptations with assurance and belief in God, 
we know that the crown of life is assured unto what? Unto us. Now, this Psalm 31 shows us that despite of David's cry of the injustice done to him, he turned his trust to the Lord. Now, one time I was in school, we were going to do an exam, and as I was seated, you know, my mother was teaching in that school. It was a primary school. And then there was this guy that I, was happen that I happened to sit with. He had a packet of alcohol, and alcohol was not allowed. And now remember, I'm a child also to a staff member in the same school. And now when the teacher comes in, what this gentleman does, you know, we have these desks in Africa, and when you're seated here, there could be some small space here. So this gentleman gets his packet, and because he didn't want to be seen with it, he puts it on my side, and he said, it belongs to this guy here. <laughs> now, this brought a reproachfully bad image to my mother, because one, we are Seventh-day Adventists, and two, through the environment where we are training in, my mother wanted me to have nothing to do with alcohol. And then she asked me later, she said, was that alcohol yours? And I told her, no. That wasn't mine. But, you know, it was, hard to, it was hard for people to believe because it was found on my side. And uh, it was from that time, wherever I went, I had to make it clear to everyone that me and alcohol are two separate people. We are distinct. And we totally have nothing to do together. Now, these trials can help and furnish us at some point in time again to be able to overcome are the challenges that we face. Now, David, in this psalm, he's trying to show us one, the importance of trusting in God. Now, when we trust in God, we know this. He will indeed do what? Listen to the cry that we are giving unto him. He will save us. And now, this shows us one thing, is the importance of hating sin to the uttermost. We need to have nothing to do with sin. In Psalm 71, verse 1, it says, in thee, O Lord, do I put my what? My trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Now, when we are confused, our trust in the Lord is removed. And this makes us unstable. But now, David also reminds us that sometimes we may fall, but God's mercy is abundant for us even amidst the troubles that are surrounding us. Now, David did many mistakes. And one of the mistakes we know is during the time when he was having challenges with Saul, he ran into the camp of the Philistines. And that was a very wrong thing. And David was put in a situation whereby if he probably left the Philistines, they would have seen him as someone who had come to spy and probably betray them. His trust with the king of Philistine would have died. And if he was for the Philistines and fought against the Israelites, he would have been looked at as a traitor and he would no longer be the king of the nation. But now, despite that happening to David, he, was put, he put himself in such a condition. But we're seeing Numbers chapter 14, verse 18 tells us, the Lord is long-suffering and of what? And of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty. Now, Despite us going and straying away from the Lord, his mercy is still great and abundant for us. David also reminds us in this psalm that the Lord will restore us from our deep pit of iniquity if we do trust in him. Now, what sin are you facing or struggling with right now? Could it be pornography? Could it be masturbation? Could it be doing anything that is not right according to the will of God. You know, when we're in such a condition, Lamentations verse, chapter 5, verse 17 shows us that our hearts are faint. Job 17, verse 7 shows us that our eyes are dim by the reason of sorrow because we are looking at our condition and we're seeing there is no hope for us. But 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8 gives us hope. That, friends, there is victory over sin. And it says, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we may be struggling at this point in time, 
But before the second coming, there will be a people that have been prepared by Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who will live a righteous life and be able to vindicate the character of God. David is still showing us that we have to stand for God and we shall not be ashamed. I remember as a Seventh-day Adventist many times when I would be at school, I would not go to school to do exams on Sabbath and I was the only one. And I had the math teacher who was a friend to my father. They worked together in the same school. And he'll be like, brother, why not coming? You know, these formulas are, are heavy. There is a book that we would study from mathematics. It was big, thick like this. And we would dis go and solve mathematical equations. This gentleman was so brilliant that if he calculated a mathematical equation, he would get the negative answer of the correct answer that he was supposed to get. And now when you're not able to attend if you're not in that class, you're not going to understand anything when you're trying to find out the course, the turn, the, the sign, and you're like, all these things are quite heavy. And if you have missed that class, you're not going to get anything. And he'll tell me, you have to come. But I'll have to tell, I had to tell him that I am a Seventh-day Adventist, and I cannot be able to come here because I trust in God. And sometimes I'll be tempted to go and be like, let me at least go and check. And it did not happen some one day I was like, but I'm curious, what do these guys really do? And so this day, I walked to school on Sabbath and I went to check. And what surprised me is that the teacher had not come. And my friends looked at me and asked me, Michael, what are you doing here? I was ashamed. man. <laughs> I felt it bitter in my heart. And from that day, I was like, no matter what it is, I, I cannot come back here on Sabbath because they knew that I'm a Sabbath keeper. And that now helped me, it helped me put, me put a stamp in my heart that no matter what is happening, if God has said, go and worship me on the Sabbath, then that is what I'm supposed to do. Go to church on the Sabbath day. And now, David also reminds us in Psalm 31 that Every faithful servant of the Lord shall be richly rewarded. Now, the trials that we go through sometimes, we cannot be able to see the future. The future looks dim. But Jesus, in his message to us in Revelation chapter 2, verse 7, says, To him that overcometh will I give to eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. When David was persecuted by King Saul, he was always on the run. But in Psalm 32, 31 verse 2 shows us that David decided to make the Lord his house of what? Of defense. When Saul sent his men to hunt for David, they could have found him and killed him. But verse 5 of Psalm 31 shows us that David decided to tell the Lord, Into thine hand I commit my what? My spirit. Now, what is happening to you, my friend, today in your life? I have no idea of what is happening to you. But have you been at a point where in your life you feel you're in a condition that is like David? When we read verse 4, verse 9, verse 10, 11, and 12, David is giving us expressions of the challenges that he's going through. In verse 4, he says, traps have been privately laid for me. Have you been in a condition where people have tried to put you in conditions whereby you can be able to make a mistake? I remember one time when I was young, someone came and gave me poison to give my father. And that I was really surprised. And I was like, I was young, I was like, I cannot commit sin. It's because when we were growing up, we had studied the book of Genesis and my mother would emphasize Cain killed Abel. And that horrible thought came to mind. I was really scared and I was like, no. Have you been in a situation where you're put in such a condition? Have you been in a situation whereby you feel your eye, your soul, and belly are consumed with grief? Have you been at a point where you feel all your life from childhood has been of grief, sighing, and you feel your strength has failed 
because of the sins that you're committing and your bones are consumed? Have you been at a point whereby you feel you are surrounded by reproach from enemies and people that are around you? Have you been at a point where you feel like a broken vessel? My dear friend, David the great patriot was in such a condition. He felt like that. But even though David was at such a point of his life, God never left him alone. Our lives may be shattered by the trials of life. We may be broken and distressed on all sides. But we have to remember that there is what? There is hope for us. Death may take our loved ones. Sickness may affect us. Negative thoughts and guilt may trouble our minds. But with hope that burns within our hearts, we can turn to the Lord and say like David in verse 1 and 20, O Lord, deliver me in thy righteousness and hide me in thy secret of thy presence. You see, in the hearts of men, God has placed a longing, a longing that cannot be filled by human love, a longing that cannot be filled by wealth, a longing that cannot be filled by worldly success. But then, if this longing cannot be filled, what do we do? There is one thing that we have to know, is that this longing will only be filled when we have gained victory over sin and we are living in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes to take us back home. Now, what can we do now as we are living today? Because we still are indeed living in a world full of sin, sorrow, death, and misery. When our hearts are broken, from verse 19 to 23 of Psalm 31, we can be able to cry out like David and say, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear what? That fear thee which thou hast wrote for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. In verse 22, verse 21, sorry. Blessed be the Lord, for he hath showed me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. We can be able to cry out like David and say, You heard my supplications when I cried unto thee, O dear Lord. You know, the Lord preserves the faithful, and he rewards the proud doer. My dear friend, what type of Christian are you? Are you cold, hot, or lukewarm? You know, the cedar trees are known for their strong resistance in tough weather conditions like winter. But we can be able to cry out to Jesus and say, Jesus, help me to be for thee, just like a big and strong cedar tree. When all other trees are bare, the cedar stands so green and fair. The wind and storm, the ice and cold, make it more beauty to unfold. So I would stand in the trial and test, just trusting you to do what's best. Though others may fail, Lord, keep thou me. May I be a cedar Christian to be able to stand even when trials are heavy. My dear friend, there is hope for you amidst the trials today. Even when your soul has been crushed by the power of sin, when all seems to be disappearing, when you seem like you are giving up on life, like David, cry, into thine hand I commit my spirit. Like Jesus on the cross in the garden, like Jesus on the cross on, in Golgoth, cry and say, into thine hand I commit my spirit, Lord. My prayer for you this day is in the last verse of Psalm 31, verse 24. Dear friend, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, and all ye that hope in the Lord. May you put your trust in the Lord, and he shall surely deliver thee. Let us pray. Father, we come before you this time. We thank you for the lessons that you have been able to give us through David the Great Patriot. And Father, this day our life 
is full of many trials. And sometimes we feel like giving up. But dear Lord, we have assurance in thee because of your son Jesus Christ. We pray that may you help us be able to live a righteous life and be able to trust you. Be with us throughout this day. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Thank you for the wonderful message and for our online audience. Thank you for joining us and I hope you guys blessed by the message and see you tomorrow at the very same time.